Thank you so much. Let me express my appreciation to our dangerous Shiro, uh, the incomparable President Randy Weingarten, for who she is and for all that she means to all of us and so many who benefit from her sacrifice. I also appreciate so much her embodying what real leadership is. I think Cornel West says that lead, you can't lead people without loving people and you cannot save people without serving people. She embodies what it means to be a servant leader and so how we appreciatively applaud her for her dynamic and phenomenal leadership. Our world is a better place because of the legend and the icon that is our dangerous she wrote Randy Weingarten. Would you one more time with me celebrate her for her leadership and for the gift that she is. I also have to shout out uh, the amazing Reverend Dr. Bishop Leah Daltrey. She is my sister friend who I love and appreciate so much. And again, Reverend Regina Thomas is also a beloved sister. So you're wondering how I got here. I got the hookup with some good sisters. So I appreciate them uh, so much. Our theme is so powerful, and so I will briefly attempt to address it uh, as we look for solutions for a better life, especially in this climate. Solutions for a better life. They're playing in our face. An exasperated caller phoned into a nationally syndicated radio show. And that was his response, his discerning response to what's happening on the political landscape. He used that illustrative idiom, they're playing in our face. Of course, they're playing in our face is an insightful idiom from, from the culture. So I had to ask my daughter, who is 31, what does their playing in our face mean? And she said, well, your generation may say they're spitting on you and calling it rain. Jay-Z may put it like this, blindfolded, expected to walk a straight line, mind molded, taught to love you but hate mine. In a real sense, they're playing in our face means that they are lying to you while acting as if they are telling you the truth. They are acting as if what is right is wrong and what is wrong is right. They are playing in our face. And then she said, Daddy, it's what's happening in politics right now. Some call it gaslighting. Kierkegaard warned us when Kierkegaard said, please don't miss this, that the world is not run by truth. It's run by illusion. It's run by those who dare to play in our face. And I want to suggest that's what's happening in too many instances. I'm so glad that you have come to Texas, the belly of the beast, where there is an all-out war on education, while in the name of education, they're doing everything they can to undermine and underfund public education in order to fund private white Christian schools. They are playing in our face. You've come to Texas, which is a strong anti-union state where they call it, watch this, right to work. But we know right to work means that you, they have the right to fire you without cause. I'm simply suggesting they are playing in our face. And right here in this nation, we have watched in recent days as they have played in our face, the Supreme Court which sits under a sign that says equal justice under the law, and yet the Supreme Court has gutted the Voting Rights Act. The Supreme Court has waged an all-out war on civil rights. The Supreme Court is playing in our face while having justices sit on the Supreme Court. One may be named Clarence Thomas in light of the fact that he is bought and paid for by 
by a Texas billionaire. They are playing in our face in this country. Yes, my sisters and brothers, what was it? A convening last week that took place in Milwaukee, and did they not play in our face? They played in our face by saying nothing about Project 2025, which they have tried to divorce from their presidential nominee, even though, make no mistake about it, Trump's, uh, Trump's cronies are the architects of Project 2025, which is determined to dismantle democracy. It's determined to ensure that they can lock up their political enemies and those they deem as dangerous. They are playing in our face. This past Sunday, President Joseph Biden, who has in a dignified and decent manner done in three and a half years more than many presidents have done in two terms. And President Biden on this past Sunday decided to pass the baton to a young dynamo by the name of Kamala Harris. And when he did that, when he did this this past Sunday immediately, the right began to do what was wrong and play in our face, bringing up racist and misogynistic tropes while talking about toning down the political rhetoric in the aftermath of the attempted assassination of their presidential nominee. And yet they've decided to be more mean-spirited than ever before. I want to suggest they are playing in our face. Well, you didn't feel that yet, but many of you, like me, were blessed by the profound keynote address of our president, Randy Weingarten, the other day. And yet one particular news, I think it's Fix News, no, Fox News, Fox News, they declared that Randy Weingarten's speech was unhinged, unhinged. I had to look up the definition of unhinged. May I share with you one of the definitions of unhinged? It means to be disturbed. I think I'll stop right there because I think all of us need to join Team Unhinged because I am disturbed about economic exploitation. I am disturbed about workers not being treated fairly. I am disturbed about the cost of living going going up while wages remain stagnant and the rich get richer and the poor get poorer. I am disturbed about, about the political repression that is taking place as you've come again to Texas. Yes, I had to add an S onto the suffix because of the fact that right here in Texas, it is not a red state. It is a voter suppressed state because it's a voter suppressed press state. I want to declare I am disturbed. I am unhinged about what's happening in Texas and so many states around this nation that have declared war on diversity, equity, and inclusion. And now they are using DEI as a bad word. Some have even said that Kamala Harris is a DEI nominee. Well, my sisters and brothers, she did not inherit the nomination. She did not inherit whatever she worked for. She's worked for it. She's qualified. She has a background that reflects her commitment to liberty and justice for all. And so if she's a DEI hire, then all of us need to be DEI hires because Kamala Harris represents the best of what America can become. And so I have come here to say I'm on team unhinged. I'm on team that believes in diversity, equity, and inclusion. And that is, uh, that is my offering for solutions for a better life. What does the team do? The team must do at least these two things that I'm done. Number one, the team must recognize, yes, Vice President Harris is dynamic. She is in 
indeed uh, Maya Angelou's phenomenal woman, but she is not the cavalry. The cavalry is not coming because we are the cavalry. We have the responsibility not to look for solutions from the top down because solutions have always come from the bottom up. That's how AFT was founded. AFT was founded to bring solutions from the bottom up and that's what we must do. You didn't feel me. I'll make it real plain. Martin Luther King Jr. 60 years ago exited President Lyndon Baines Johnson's office in the aftermath of the signing of the 64 Civil Rights Bill. But before he left, he said to President Johnson, President, Mr. President, it's not enough for us to have access to public accommodations. Now it's not enough for us to end legalized discrimination. We must also have voting rights in a, a true democracy. And that's when Lyndon Baines Johnson says, Martin, I'm sorry, I don't have the political votes to pass a voting rights bill now. I've used all of my power trying to pass a civil rights bill. Martin, I don't have the power, but here's what you do. If you want me to pass a voting rights bill, you make me do it. And then Martin Luther King Jr. exits the Oval Office. Andy Young is right by his side. Young testifies, Martin, what are we going to do? And Martin responded, we're going to Selma to get him some power. And they went from Selma through Bloody Sunday all the way to Montgomery, Alabama. And by the time that march was over, Lyndon Johnson got on national television and declared, we shall overcome. Why? Because real progress is never from the top down. It's got to come from the bottom up. And so, yes, I believe believe there are two clear choices in this race. One choice wants to take us back to some dark times. Another choice wants to move us forward so America can become all that America is impregnated with potential to become. We're not going back. We're going forward. But in order to go forward, we must go forward with a vision that comes again, not from the top down but from the bottom up. We've got the power. As a matter of fact, hear me well. I'm convinced right here in Houston, Texas, that the power of the people is always greater than the people who are in power. We've got the power. We've got the power to transform this nation. We've got the power to bring about voting rights for all that is protected. We've got the power to pass legislation that ensures not just minimum wage, but a living wage that all of us can live comfortably and not just the fat cats at the top. We've got the power to do it, but not only must we recognize we've got the power, but then let's cast a vision where we reimagine and reconstruct this nation into one of liberty and justice for all. We can reimagine America. America was born with a deficiency, and yet that deficiency does not have to define us. We can move forward in spite of what has happened behind us as long as we're determined to not go back. I'm simply suggesting that we can reimagine America and then fight to make America what it should become. I have a beloved friend, Jennifer Jones Austin, a brilliant, phenomenal attorney, faith leader and civil rights activist and Jennifer Jones Austin shared with me her testimony. I give it to you. Jennifer Jones Austin, because she was around during 9-11 in New York in the area where the terrible tragedy occurred, inhaled the toxins in the air. As a consequence, she was stricken with leukemia. Jennifer Jones Austin has leukemia. When she had leukemia, here's what happened. The doctors declared 
truth determined she only had a 1% chance to live and they tried to treat her with chemotherapy but all it did was prolong the agony and so as a consequence they discovered that if she could get a transplant if she could get a transplant the transplant would redo the structure of her body the transplant would do more than treatment and because she was able to secure a transplant Jennifer Jones Austin is alive and well today Martin Luther King Jr. in his last message April 3rd 1968 declared the nation is sick and I have come to say treatment is not enough it's time for a transplant a transplant that honors our workers it's time for a transplant where we no longer exploit the needy and enrich the greedy it's time for a transplant where we no, don't uh, where we don't allow the slow burn taking place on this planet because of the greed of corporate of corporate big wigs it's time for a transplant a transplant that respects the dignity of all humanity regardless of how you were born regardless of who you love because all of us are precious in the sight of our great God I'm simply saying it's time for a transplant and when you know it's time for a transplant you do I'm quoting Thurgood Marshall and I'm about to quit Thurgood Marshall said to his students you do what's right and let the law catch up you do what's right and the law will finally catch up with what is right ah that didn't get you I'll make it real plain the story is told I'm done the story is told about a teacher who stood before her class and she had on the desk this fish bowl and this fish bowl had in, in it a gold fish she took the gold fish out of the bowl put it on the desk right in front of her third grade class and the third graders were horrified as they watched that fish that gold fish flop and flip gasping for air trying to save its life the teacher then said I'm about to exit the class if any of you get up and try to rescue this fish you will be expelled from this school and she left the class the students left their horror sat there horrified but then finally one got up ran to the desk reached for the goldfish and the goldfish jumped out of her hand she then turned and said are you all just gonna sit there and let the fish die all of the students got up they gathered around the fish they corralled caught the fish put the fish back into the bowl ran back to their seat the door opens in walks the teacher the teacher says congratulations all of you get an A because the lesson of the day is never be afraid to do the right thing even if the consequences will get you you in trouble why have you gathered in Houston because y'all not afraid to get in trouble you're not afraid to be unhinged you're not afraid to do what is right and that's what we're going to do in 2024 and beyond we're going to do what's right we're going to do what's just and the world is going to catch up go ahead and do what's right go ahead and do what is just because guess what I'm unhinged let's join team unhinged